how do you get out of your head during this pandemic? What are the top three books that you would recommend? Do you believe in aliens is the next question. You want me to be honest with you? Today we're going to be diving into a question answer session just for the hell of it. I don't know how long this is going to go, uh, but I uh, put up a post on my Instagram and asked you guys, hey, if you had one question that you could ask me of how I could help you, what would it be? And uh, I got a lot of questions. I got a lot of interesting questions and uh, I picked the ones that I feel like would be the best for you guys. Uh, if we get into it, there are some interesting questions, uh, questions about aliens. Uh, there are questions about living with me for a week. So, hey, you know, we might get into that at some point in time. We'll see where we go. Uh, so I'm going to just go through these and this could be a longer episode. I have, I have a feeling this will be a longer episode, but I think it will be fun. I think it's be kind of a free flow. And uh, if you guys want to ask me questions, follow me on Instagram, ask me questions on there and uh, I'll try to dive into it. So uh, the first question, which I had a couple questions that were along the lines of something like this. And they were, uh, what do you do when life has turned, your life has been turned upside down by the pandemic? How do you find a way to get back on track? Uh, another question that was something around this is how do you get out of your head during this pandemic, the fear, the anxiety, the depression? Um, I've got one very simple answer for all of you with the pandemic. And uh, the answer is to just accept, right? If you're feeling fear and anxiety uh, around everything that's going on, the unknown, uh, the problem is you're not accepting your current reality. What you're really wanting to happen is you're wanting to go back to the way that it was. And at this point in time for the unforeseeable future, it's not going to go back to the way that it was. It's going to be the way that it is for, you know, I don't know, however long it's going to be. And, uh, you know, I understand that some people are losing jobs. And uh, if you've lost your job, I understand that sucks. I've lost jobs before too. Uh, but what is the secret? accept and move on. Okay, now what? Not to look in the past and go, oh my God, I wish I wouldn't have lost my job, but to look at it and say, okay, I have lost my job. Is there anything I can do about that right now? No. Okay, well, what can I do? Priority number one will be to find another job. So if you're out there and you've lost something or something has changed for you, I feel for you, I get it, I understand, but that's happened and there's nothing that you can do about that. Because whatever you're having stress and anxiety over uh, with the current pandemic, you probably, if the pandemic wasn't going on, would take those exact same feelings and put it into something else. You probably have stress and anxiety around your relationship or the current circumstances in the world or something else besides just the pandemic. The pandemic is, you know, if you guys have heard me say it over and over again, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So if you're stressed and, anxi and feeling anxiety around the pandemic, you're probably feeling stress and anxiety around something else. And so uh, the, the number one thing that I could tell you is if you're out there, um, you're just going to have to accept uh, the phrase that I say all the time, which I tend to get quoted on a lot on uh, Instagram when people type up on Instagram and then tag me in it, is, uh, is this. Your stress and anxiety will be in direct proportion to how much, how much stress and anxiety you feel will be in direct proportion to how much you're resisting the way that the world is, right? Your stress and your anxiety will be in direct proportion. Like they'll be literally exactly the same around how much you're resisting the way that the world is. So if you're resisting a lot and you're having uh, a lot of resistance to the way that the world currently is, well, then you're going to have a lot of stress and anxiety that is equal to that. So if you want to get rid of your stress and anxiety, what do you need to do? You need to just accept it is the way that the world is. Is it the way that you want it? Probably not. But the quicker that you accept it, the quicker that you can work through it. So that's what I would say is accept. It is the way that it is. The world is perfect the way that it is. It's changing. It's changing into being even more perfect. Uh, but you have to realize it's... Uh, you know, what I always say is that the that you have, you can either think that the world is happening to you or you can think the world is happening for you. So, you know, you could say this pandemic is really screwing up my life right now. Or you could say, you know what, the pandemic is actually shifting up my foundation and making me go out and find new opportunities. Maybe it's making you get rid of that job or getting you fired from that job that you hated so that you can go and actually do something that you truly love. So the world's either happening to you or it's happening for you. I am under the belief that it's always happening for you. And so if it's happening for you, what are you supposed to learn from this that's going on right now? 
So that's what I would say. Uh, great questions. There was a few of them that came in like that. Uh, this one says, if there was one piece of advice you could bestow, great word, as if we're in the 1800s, if you could bestow on people, uh, if there was one piece of advice that you could bestow on people that you wish everyone would follow, what would it be? I'm torn because I have two pieces of advice. Um, the first piece of advice that I would give you is to work on yourself harder than you do anything else, right? To work on yourself harder than you do anything else in the world. Because the more that you work on yourself, the better that you're going to be. And the better that you are, the more that you can go out and change the world. So that would be the first thing that I would say. And the second thing that I would say, especially with the world's current circumstances, is to, to not be so... Uh, so concrete in your opinions. Be open to somebody shifting your found the foundation of your life, to changing your opinion. There's a lot of people that are just so against their opinion being changed and when they get challenged, they get angry, they start pushing their opinion on other people. What I would say is be open to somebody changing your opinion. Be open to living, be open to seeing things from other people's perspectives. Right? Be empathetic to the fact that you might not know everything. In fact, you don't know anything and neither do I. We know a very, very, very little amount. There is a, a it actually reminds me, I'm going to pull up my phone so I can tell you this quote that I found today. Once again, guys, this is just a different one. We're just going to go free flow. So I'm just going to be, you know, a little bit all over the place. Uh, and the, the quote says, the more I learn, the more I learn that I have a lot more to learn. Right? It's like the more I learn, the more I learn that I have a lot more to learn. It's like the, the, the older I get, the more I realize that I don't know anything. It's like I, I learn more, but as I learn more, I realize that I don't know much at all. And so uh, that would be a big piece of advice that I would give you guys is to just be open to other people's situations. You know, I don't, I'll give you an example. I am a white man in America. I know nothing of what it's like to be a black man, a black woman, gay, I know nothing of what it's like to be anybody outside of America, to be raised in, you know, Yemen, which is this country that's just being destroyed right now with war and famine. I know nothing of what it's like. So who am I to act like I know what your life is like? I don't, but I'm willing to sit down and listen to you and to have you change my opinions. And I think that's kind of a cool thing to be able to sit with someone, have their opinions. So that would be it. Two things, two pieces of advice. Number one, I would work on yourself harder than you work anything else. And number two, be open to having other people change your opinions. Don't be so, so firm in them. Uh, next question that came in that I thought was good was, what is your favorite quote and how does it keep you going? Uh, my favorite quote, I have a lot of favorite quotes, but this is the favorite quote that popped into my head immediately, is uh, the cave that you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. The cave that you fear to enter holds a treasure that you seek. What do I mean by that exactly? I mean that uh, what you are most afraid to do is what you need to do. What you're most afraid to do if you do it will be the thing that changes your life. You know, that's, um, it's the reason why, and you guys hear me talk about them quite often, uh, why I think psychedelics are so amazing for lots of people. Not everybody, but for lots of people is because whatever it is that you need to do or need to work past or you need to conquer um, in order to get to the next stage of your life or to let go of your ego or to stop with your control problems or whatever it is, when you do psychedelics, they're f you're faced with them. Like we all have our demons in some sort of way. You're faced with them. Whether it's a control problem, whether it's a trauma that you haven't fully healed from, whether it's you haven't fully grieved from someone's death, whatever it is, it's in front of you. And the reason why is because it's like the highest version of yourself coming down and saying, this is it. In order for you to progress and become who you truly can become, you need to work through this first. And um, that's why I love the quote, uh, the cave that you fear to enter holds a treasure that you seek. Uh, the, <laughs> the next question, which I found was pretty funny, says, can I come live with you for a week just to pick your brain closely and, <laughs> and for free? Uh, the answer to that is no. Even if you paid me, I wouldn't want you to come live with me for a week. Not because I don't love you, but because of the fact that uh, 
I'll just be honest with you. That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> it doesn't sound fun in my opinion. Uh, I don't really want you to come live with me. Um, but you know, I put enough, <laughs> I put enough content out there for you to basically see what my life is like and to understand what's going on in my brain. Just continue to watch this wherever you're watching this or listen to this, wherever you're listening to it. Um, uh, oh, and then the other, the other part of it said, I believe a week consultation with you would change my life for good. It probably would. Um, maybe, hopefully, I would hope so. <laughs> if you were with me for a week and you didn't get anything from it, uh, I think that there's probably uh, an issue on my side. Uh, so for all of you guys that wanted to come live with me, sorry, that is not, uh, I, there are no open invitations to live with me uh, for a week. Uh, next one uh, says, I see you have on one of your new clothing line shirts. How soon will they be available? Um, for those of you guys that are listening on the podcast, you're not watching the video on Instagram or YouTube. Uh, I am wearing the shirt because what happened was I took a picture, a selfie, and I posted it and said, hey, if you have questions for me on my podcast, comment them down below. Uh, this is actually the first look. So you guys can see this. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the brand at this point. This is actually a sample shirt. This is the very first sample shirt that exists in the world. For those of you guys that can't see it, go to my Instagram, follow me, and you can see it. Um, and it says, Be the Change. Uh, on the front of it, it's a black shirt. On the side, it has our logo, which is a red heart um, that's kind of very imperfectly drawn on purpose. And the reason why is because, you know, we'll talk about it more as the time comes. But uh, the reason why it's a, a heart on your sleeve is because uh, we want to promote people wearing their hearts on their sleeves um, because uh, we think that, you know, authenticity is what's needed in the world. There's also one more surprise that's actually on the inside of this shirt, but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. But there's a surprise on the inside of the shirt down by the crotch. <laughs> this is true. There is. Um, you know, it's it's not my crotch. It's the crotch of the shirt. Uh, so uh, there is something on the bottom inside of the shirt. Uh, I'll give you a quick look if you're watching. There it is. That was it. That's all you get to see. Um, so when we make the full announcement, I'll make the full announcement. But how soon will they be available? Um, probably the next 60 days. So uh, for you guys that have been like, man, where is the, because I've gotten a lot of messages. I get like 30 emails a, a week that are like, hey, where, when's your clothing line being launched? Um, it's, uh, it's still going on. It's just that we wanted to make sure we got the highest quality shirts possible. So these shirts are not like shirts that you can get at, uh, on basically anywhere online. Uh, we went directly to the manufacturer uh, to get these shirts. These aren't just like the cheap, you know, uh, American apparel or next level shirts or anything like that. Like we are the only company in the world besides this company that makes this shirt that's able to use this. Um, so we went directly to the source and talked to the CEO. So uh, next question, which came up a couple times. How do you find the right circle of friends? Um, this is a great question because first off, um, I didn't have, I had a good circle of friends years ago, uh, but about five years ago, I really switched my circle of friends. Like I became really, really diligent on making sure that I was hanging out with the right people. And um, what I did to find my circle of friends is I asked myself the question, where would the perfect friend be hanging out, right? So uh, networking events. So I went to meetup.com and on meetup.com, I tried to figure out the perfect person that I would be really good friends with. Where would they be hanging out? What would they be doing? Um, I found a a bunch of different networking events that I went to, a bunch of things that I went to. And the way that I found my group of friends was I found one networking event that was uh, the one I related to the most. It's called Internet Marketing Party. It happens here in Austin. And uh, I actually, you know, I what's cool about it is you, can, you can't see it in the video, but right above me right here is the thing where I, I spoke at Internet Marketing Party. The very first Internet Marketing Party that I went to, I was like, I'm going to speak on that stage one day. Um, and it took me four and a half years but I spoke on the stage and uh, there's a little right above me. If you ever look at my Instagram stories, you've seen it when I'm sitting here. Uh, right above me is the uh, signed, every single person that was at the event signed it. But uh, where I found my best circle of friends was actually by going to Internet Marketing Party every single month, every single month, every single month, and just connecting with as many people as I could and finding, it, finding one person, that was it. My goal was to find one person that I truly connected with every single month. And what I would do is I would get their number and I would ask them if they wanted to go get coffee. We would go get coffee. If we clicked, you know, we'd develop a relationship. And what happens is when you, birds of a feather flock together. So if you connect with someone who's a good person to connect with, you go and get coffee with them. 
they've got other friends that you probably want to connect with. And you can connect them with your friends. They can connect you with their friends. You can go back and forth. And what you realize is you start developing this friend network that's pretty incredible. So what I would say is figure out where all of these people that you truly want to become friends with are hanging out. Go there, go to networking events, meet people. Don't be the person just giving and handing out business cards. That's not the correct way to network. What I would say is go ahead and literally take... Um, but, you know, spend time with people. If you're not connected with someone in the first like 10 minutes, you know, excuse yourself, go to the bathroom, go get a drink, whatever it is you need to do. And then start talking to someone else. Your goal is to connect with just one person on a deeper level and then take them to coffee later that week. So that's how I've developed my, my circle of friends. It's kind of cool because in, in about three years, about three years it took me, maybe even less, two years probably, uh, I developed the friends group where I was like, oh my gosh, this is a friends group I always wanted. Like really incredible, heart-centered, spiritual people who are also freaking killing it and doing multi-million dollars, uh, multi-million dollars in, in business. And they're doing it for all the right reasons. You know, are you going to find people you don't like in there? Absolutely. There's like 95% of the people that I don't like in there. You know, people that are just doing it for money and they want to do that type of stuff. But it was just like, for me, took me some time. You kind of sift through and you find the people that you connect with and those are your peeps and that's who you stay with. So that's how I found the right circle of friends. Um, next question says, when did you realize you needed to wake up and make a change in your life? Um, when I was about 19 years old uh, is when I started selling Cutco knives, which you guys probably know if you've been listening to the, the Mindset Mentor podcast for a while. And... Um, <clears throat> I heard my first coach and paid him $500 a month when I was 19. And uh, when I really realized there was one moment in my life where I remembered, I remembered like waking up and being like, oh my God, this is, I need to do something. And uh, I was partying a lot. I was 19. I was partying. Now you guys have to realize I was like a professional partier from 16 years old on. And like I was, and what I mean professional party, like I came from the city where it had the un, the highest underage drinking per capita in the United States. Uh, we, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and just tell you guys this because whatever, I might as well. You guys know I'm fully authentic. Uh, I was part of a surf crew and uh, we were the surf crew that was like, it was, it was like in the people in our school, we surfed, right? And we all hung out. It was just the surfers. We were known um, because we saw it in a surf movie as team TDTF is what we went by. Uh, I don't, I don't think I've ever said this in a public setting. So this is hilarious. Team TDTF is what we went by, which stood for too drunk to fuck. Uh, swear to God, this is a true story. I'm not even kidding you. So, uh, where that came from is we were watching a surf movie and, uh, the surf movie, they went by team too drunk to fuck. And we're like, that's pretty cool. We should go by that. And we were also known as the people who threw all of the parties in the city. So like, if you had your parents, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm sharing this. This is so funny. Um, if you had your parents going out of town, you called us and we threw the party for you. We actually threw a party. Um, God, I can't, I just literally, I feel like I'm like on truth serum. I'm saying stuff I've never said before. <laughs> um, we threw a party one time that was so big, the cops got called and there was a mile and a half of traffic. And, um, and there was about 1100 people that were there. Uh, it was all completely underage drinking for sure. That's what it was. And so am I proud of it? No. Is it part of my life? Yes. Am I being honest with you guys? Yes. I'm not going to tell you I was a perfect person for a long time. I'm still not a perfect person. I'm going to just be brutally honest with you guys as much as I possibly can. So that's where I came from. And I was partying and blacking out, smoking a lot of weed, drinking a lot of alcohol. I mean, it was, it was intense how serious we took partying, right? And uh, so Team TDTF, once again, we got it from a surf movie. We thought it was cool. So everybody knew when your parents were out of town, you called someone in TDTF and we would throw the party for you. Um, so when did I realize? I realized when I was still partying at 19 years old, and this is why I'm telling you this whole story, about my past. I was still 19 years old. I was partying. I wasn't even legally able to drink, but I kept, I, I had a one-on-one -on -one coach. I paid him $500 a month and I kept showing up late to the phone calls or not hitting the assignments. And I wasn't taking it as serious as I could, even though I was paying him $500 a month, which at 19 years old is like all the money in the world. I was paying $350 a month for rent. I was paying more for my one-on-one -on -one coach than I was for rent. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, 
And one morning he said to me, and he doesn't even remember the saying this to me. This is what's funny. I don't remember anything he said to me in our two years of working together. I mean, there was a lot of stuff that was said that changed my life, but I don't remember anything off the top of my head. The one thing I remember is one morning, I still remember sitting in my car and he said the phrase, and you may have heard me say this before. Um, he said to, to me the phrase about being a CEO. And uh, he said, Rob, I've got a question for you. If a business fails, whose fault is that? And I was like, I mean, it's the, the CEO's fault. He's like, yeah, that's right. And if the business succeeds, whose fault is that? I was like, I don't know, probably the CEO's fault as well. And he's like, yeah, that's right. He goes, now let me ask you a question. See, he set me up. He set me up is what he did. He said, let me ask you a question. With your life, if you get to the end of your life and you see your life as something you regret, as a failure, whose fault is that? I was like, it's, it's my fault. And he said, if you get to the end of your life and it was a massive success, whose fault is that? And I said, it's my own fault. He said, right. He said, so what you don't realize is that you are not treating your life as if you're the CEO of your life. What you're doing is you're blaming other people. You're making excuses. You are living your life as if, you know, you just get another shot. You don't get another shot. You have to live your life as if you're the CEO of your life. Plain and simple, that's all that there is. And right now, your business is failing. And I was like, oh my God. And from that moment on, I literally stopped blaming other people. I, I was a professional excuse maker. Like I was so damn good and persuasive of giving you an excuse. I was, I was like a professional. I was so good at it. I just stopped from that moment on. And I was like, everything that happens is my fault. From that moment on, and that piece of advice changed my life. So that was the moment that I can think of when I really realized I needed to wake up. Next question says, what are the top three books that you would recommend? Uh, the top three books I would recommend and uh, number one would be uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. That is my favorite book for what at least for me made me wake up and really start to take life seriously and realize that success is not something that's just like for the for the one percent or for the few people that are born with a silver spoon like success is cap your every, every single person is capable of success and there's steps to getting there and i realized when i read that book oh my god these are the steps to be successful if i literally just read this book and do every single thing that this book says i'll be successful what's crazy is that i read that book 14 years ago and if you fast forward to today i would say yeah it worked like it 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 worked and so i would say that book changed my life, made me realize that I could be successful no matter where I came from, no matter what I look like, no matter what it is that I want to do, I could be successful. So that was the first one I'd recommend. The second one that I would recommend is called The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papazan. And um, the reason why I would recommend that book is because too many people uh, spend their lives, like build, they build multiple businesses at once. They always have a plan B in case plan A doesn't work out. But the one thing, incredible book, talks about how you should put all your eggs in one basket. Because you always hear, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And this is written by Gary Keller, who's a billionaire. He runs, you know, he owns Keller Williams, which is the largest real estate company in the world. And he talks about the one thing, put all your eggs in one basket. So people say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. His phrase is basically, put all your eggs in one basket and take care of that freaking basket. Put 100% into your effort into that thing. Right. So outside of your family or whatever it is, 100 percent of your effort goes into that thing. That's how you become successful. Uh, that changed my life because that's what got me to where I am now, because I quit all of my plan B's and I said, I'm going to succeed at this no matter what. And, you know, that's that's what really changed my focus. And then the last one I would say, which might surprise some people, is actually called uh, it's recently became my my third favorite book, like in my top three because uh, I just read it within the past nine months and it's called Conversations with God. And uh, the reason why I would recommend that book is because uh, 
I was, I'll just be brutally honest with you about, um, you know, being raised with my religion and all of that stuff. Um, and here's the thing, no matter what you believe in, it's cool with me. Like it's, it's all, you know, whether you're, you know, Catholic, Christian, whether you're Jewish, whether you're Muslim, you know, whatever it is that you might be, I know there's a lot of different religions, whether you're just spiritual. Um, I think that all of them are right in some sort of way. You know, all of them is to get you to God, whatever you might say. And that's a, the, even the phrase God for a long time was hard for me to speak. And I'll tell you why in just a second. But um, they're all, it's like they're, they're all ice cream, just different flavors. All of them get you to God, hopefully. Um, just different flavors of how to get there. Now, you know, some people will be like, oh, but mine's right and theirs is wrong. And mine's right and theirs is wrong. Whatever, cool. Believe whatever you want to believe. But once again, just try to see something from other people's perspective and have them change your opinion if it's possible. Don't be so set in your ways. You know, be open to change or to at least other people's opinions. You don't have to change your opinion at all. Um, but when I was raised Catholic, um, I know a lot of people that are recovering Catholics um, a lot, it seems like. Uh, I always felt like, I'm just, this is cool. These are, these, answering these questions is cool because I'm being brutally freaking honest. Like I'm saying stuff I've never talked about before. So um, we're going to keep doing this. And you know, it is longer. We're already at like 24, 25, 26 minutes, something like that. But we're going to keep going because um, this is fun. I want to keep doing this with you guys. And, uh, and so basically, uh, and let's do this. If you want to ask me questions, email me rd at robdial.com. So email me rd, like Rob Dial, rd at robdial.com. Ask me questions. Um, and then I'll finish answering this question. So, um, rd at robdial.com is where to email. The better your question, the better my answer. So don't give me an entire life story. Um, send me an email or send me a video that's, you know, 30 seconds or less, which would be cool as well. Actually, send me a video, 30 seconds or less to my email. The better your question, the better my email, uh, or better my answer will be. Um, so I always felt, I always felt being raised Catholic that I was terrified. And the reason why was because I felt like, and this is not me bashing, you know, Catholicism in any sort of way. This is just my opinion of the way that I saw it, the way I was raised, you know, all of this stuff. Um, I always felt like I had to be scared into believing in God. Um, that's the way that I saw it. And for, I'll take you on my, my journey of spirituality and God, I guess, as we go deeper into it. So, um, so I always felt that I was terrified. I remember seeing a, um, a meme one time. It was a, a, a you know, a sketch and it was uh, two escalators. One of them was going up and the other one was going down. And it said, you know, there was a sign that said, choose your path. And one of them said to God and the other one said to hell. And I felt like my entire childhood, I was always worried about every single decision that I was making because I was terrified that I was making the wrong decision and God was watching me at all point in time. And if I screwed up, I was done. I was going to hell and it was this terrible place that I would stay forever. It scared me. And the reason why I was so messed up from it was because Every time I read the Bible or heard the, uh, the priest talk, he talked about how much God loved me. And I had this internal struggle of, if God loves me so much, why would I be forced to, in, like, damnation? Like, why is it either, I, if something loves me so much, why would it force me to be screwed from the second, like I was born with original sin, according to what they're saying. And so I really struggled because what, what I always felt was God, um, didn't feel right to me. It didn't feel, it, it, it felt like I, the God that was, that was, that was talked about to me was a lot scarier than what it truly was. And so I've, so, you know, I stopped going to church in my teenage years. I went back to church. I found a place that I liked and I went back to church for a little while mainly because I connect with a preacher and I liked, you know, playing guitar and I play guitar in their band. There's a few thousand people that were there every single weekend. So that was kind of a cool thing. And then I got out of it and I almost became like atheist for a little while of like, ah, when we die, we become worm fruit. Right. And, um, I was that way for a few years. And I started, if I'm, if I'm honest with you, I started getting a little bit more spiritual through meditation and through all of that. And, um, I started getting spiritual through meditation, through growing and learning. And I started doing psychedelics and I did psychedelics and I was like, oh my God, 
I, I, I don't get it, but I understand, I feel it. Like I feel the whole thing of the connection of God and the universe and all those things. When before, a couple years prior, I was like, you know, all of this stuff is just random, right? It just, things grew, things happened over billions of years. But then I like felt like I was like close to God and I could talk to God and I was like right there. And it's, I know it sounds crazy. I get it, but just be open-minded when I talk about this. And, uh, and then I read conversation with God and I was like, oh my God, literally this is the God that I've always felt was behind the scenes of all of the religions and dogma and all of the rituals and things you have to do. Like behind all that was this, this entity, this thing. And so, you know, that's a really long answer that I went way off course, but I wanted to tell you guys like things that I've never told you before. Cause I think this is fun. And so conversation with God was really eye opening for me. And it changed a lot of stuff for me because I was like, Oh, I feel like this is the God that I've always thought existed. So those are three books that I would recommend. Number one, uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Number two is The One Thing. And number three is Conversation with God. <laughs> Next question says, do you believe, because I'm just going to keep going. Like, let's just keep going. You know, if you're bored of me, go to another episode. That's cool. You won't offend me. But if you guys want to roll with it, let's roll with it. You guys are my ride or dies. I understand it. We're drinking the same Kool-Aid. Let's do it. Um, do you believe in aliens is the next question. And the answer is yes. Uh, I do believe in aliens. Have they ever been to Earth before? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, but probably. Maybe. They might even be living around us right now. Right? Like that's the crazy thing. Like aliens could be living around us. It could be another person, like another human that you know. That's what's kind of, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? Think about that for a second. Like maybe an, an alien is someone that you know. That's something that's kind of, I like to think about really crazy out there stuff when I sit quietly and, and think about myself. Maybe it's somebody that I know. Maybe someone I know is an alien. They've come to give me a lesson. Oh, that would be cool, right? So there's that. Maybe aliens are some animals. Have you ever seen some of the animals on this earth? Have you ever seen a freaking octopus? Have you ever seen what an octopus can do? An octopus has eight brains. That's some crazy shit, right? Like, just think about that for a second. What? It has eight brains, one for each leg? I mean, they change colors. They're super intelligent. They're, I mean, they could be aliens. I don't know. But I think that somewhere, if you look at, if you want to have, if you want to have your mind blown, like completely open. One video that I want you to look up is called the, um, I think it's called the largest photo ever taken photo, largest photo ever taken by NASA. And, uh, it is at us 20. Yeah. If you, if you Google or YouTube largest photo ever taken, it is, it pops up. It's got 23 million views right now. It's called gigapixels of Andromeda. And if you watch this video, you'll realize how many billions, not even billions, trillions and trillions of stars and galaxies and planets there are. And just statistically speaking, there's got to be something else that's out there. Like just there's got to be something, right? If you talk billions and trillions and trillions and trillions, like beyond what you can possibly fathom, there's something out there. There's got to be. That's just my opinion. But hey. You might have a different one. That's pretty cool though. Who asked, what, is, what the hell does that have to do with anything? It has nothing to do with the mindset mentor. Do I believe in aliens? I do. Uh, and I think that I think that if humans, you want, me, you want to go down a little bit deeper in this? I think that if humans get to the point where we're about to destroy ourselves, I honestly think that aliens could step in and save us from destroying ourselves. Uh, I think that if an alien is here, they are way more intelligent than us and they're not going to be here to kill us. They're going to be here to save us. Think about that one for a little while today. Next one says, if you could change one thing in the world, what would it be? More empathy. That would be what it'd be. I kind of answered that in the last question. I, not the last question, but earlier in the question. Um, just seeing things from another person's perspective. Just having more empathy. Giving someone a hug. More love, man. Like just more love. What's the biggest accomplishment that you've made so far? Mm, I would say biggest accomplishment that's kind of a really cool one is uh, once we passed a billion views on Facebook. Uh, so we hit over a billion views between all the videos that I've made. Um, 
and it took about two and a half years. I think we're almost at about 2 billion views now. I haven't checked, but once we hit that, I was like, wow, just to, th just to think like even just to think about it right now blows my mind, like a billion views, like a billion people. There's only 7.5 billion people on the planet. That means that there's a, I mean, obviously people have seen my videos a couple times, so that doesn't really count. But just to think of a billion humans watching something that I've made, like that, that's freaking crazy. So I think that that's really cool. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Um... You want me to be honest with you? Um, I've gotten to a point in my life where I've, I've set a lot of goals. I failed at goals. I've succeeded at goals. Um, I've done well. I've done bad. I've done all of those things. Um, I do believe that setting goals are super important for people. And I spent 14 years of my life being hardcore invested in the goals. Now what I'm trying to do is to try to actually take away and stop focusing on goals. Um, and to kind of just go with the flow of the universe and all of these, you know, these woo woo -wee things that I talk about. Um, so where do I see myself in 10 years? Um, doing what I'm doing now, but probably on a bigger scale. Um, I'll probably have written a couple books. That's the next thing that I'm working on uh, is writing a book. Uh, I have, I go with my gut feelings on everything that I do. And um, I don't care to write a book. I honestly don't care to write a book at all. If I'm being 100% honest with you, like I don't even like writing. Um, but from a non-ego perspective, um, I will be honest with you. Um, I'm going to write a book and I feel like, I don't know if it's going to be the first one, the second one, whatever it is. I think that it will make a massive impact in the world. And this is from a trying to take my ego out as much as I possibly can. I just feel like the stuff that I teach which I haven't even shared on my podcast, which is what's crazy. Um, the stuff that I teach and like my closed groups and the courses that I teach and stuff um, is so advanced and out there that I don't know anybody else that's teaching it. But when people understand it, I feel like it changes their life. Like when people go through and they watch the first four lessons that I have, they're like, holy shit. I didn't even know you taught anything like this. So um, you know, my podcast is great. Like I love the podcast. I love making these audios for you guys to listen to on the podcast. I love making the videos for you guys to watch on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. But, um, it's more for the masses. Like it's, it's kind of like 101, like personal development, 101, 102, 103. Um, the book that I'm going to write is like personal development 601. Uh, so I think that the book is probably an, a big thing. I think 10 years from now, um, I have this thing where I, I, I'll be honest with you. I know how big what, and this is not from an ego standpoint. I know how big it feels like my mission is, is going to be. And it's so big, it kind of scares the shit out of me. But, and, and here's the thing that I'll say though, just cause it scares me doesn't mean that I won't do it. Like I will 100% do it. Um, I will 100% stay on this path. Um, it scares me to have to become more public and more out in, in facing the public and in growing. Cause you know, when you look at it's, it's, it's kind of nuts. If I'm being honest with you of growing a following of 2.5 million people, like that's, that's scary. Like it literally is scary. Sorry. I'm, I'm moving around a little bit cause I'm in the same position for 30, 40 minutes now. Um, so my, my chair is kind of creaking, but it's kind of scary. Um, cause then you start thinking about personal safety. You start thinking about, um, being seen everywhere. Like I'm a private person. I love being private. I don't really, you know, when people come up to me, it's cool. And I'm like, this is amazing, but I couldn't imagine that on a mass scale. Um, so where do I see myself in 10 years? Um, I just see myself having a bigger impact in the world. Um, I see it being a massive impact on the world and, um, it scares me, but I won't let fear stop me from what I'm truly supposed to be doing in this world. Um, that's the way that I see it. Uh, do you ever get days where you struggle to remain positive? Um, to be honest with you, no, not at this point in my life. Um, I've been working on myself for a long time. And um, I I think that if I struggle to remain positive, it comes from my, sh my lack of acceptance to the way that it is. Like I spoke about earlier in this episode where it's like, sometimes you just got to let go. Whatever, man, I'm not in control. Uh, the first time I did ayahuasca, which is a, a psychedelic from Peru, 
I realized that I had a control problem and I still, I mean, it still exists, but it's probably 20% of what it was two and a half years ago, three, actually three years ago, this three years ago, last month. Um, and I've just learned to kind of just accept, just let things go. Um, when you have a control problem, everything's more stressful. Everything gives you more anxiety, all of that stuff. But when you just accept and let go and know that the world's happening for you and that everything will work out, like everything will work out. Like if you think about your entire past, everything's worked out. Like you're still here. You're still alive. You've made it through everything. And when you just accept and go, you know what? I'm just going to let go. Are things going to happen in my life that I don't want? Yeah. Are things, you know, are bad things going to happen? Yeah. Are people going to die that I don't want to? Yeah. But that's the beauty of life, isn't it? Like it's only beautiful. The, the great things are only beautiful if you go through the crappy things. Like life is only great. You can only appreciate the good if you've been through the bad. And so do I want to go through them? No, but do I know that, that, do I believe that everything that happens to me is a perfectly crafted curriculum for me to grow and become the best version of myself? Yes, that's what I personally believe. So I'm just going to let go. Let things be the way they're going to be and just trust uh, that everything that happens to me is exactly the way it's supposed to be and that it's all perfect. And so I don't really struggle with remaining positive because I think that even when the shitty stuff happens to me, it's all done for me. It's all part of my perfectly correct, correct, perfectly, what the hell did I just say a minute ago? Perfectly crafted, (laughs) crafted curriculum. It's my perfectly crafted curriculum. And if crappy stuff happens to me, that's what was supposed to happen to me. And that's just the way that I choose to live my life. So this was fun. I wasn't expecting to do this, but I just said, hey, you know what? I'm recording, right? Like I was literally in the middle of recording. For those of you guys that are watching the video, I had my lights all on and I was like, I didn't plan any more episodes, but I kind of want to keep talking clearly because I've been talking for 42 freaking minutes. That's crazy. And I was like, let me just put up a post on Instagram and see if people have questions for me. I got like 72 questions in the first 30 minutes. So for those of you guys that want to ask me questions, follow me on Instagram. Um, Send me a question on Instagram. Or what I would say is send me a question directly to my email. So here, let's do this. Send me a question, a 30 minute question. I'm not, no, I'm sorry, not a 30 minute question. That's too long. 30 second question and do this. Take your phone, ask me the question through a selfie. And what I'll do is if I choose you, I will feature you on my video asking me the question. I'll have my editor actually put you in the corner. You'll pop up right here for those of you guys that are watching the video. We'll have it go through, we'll have it play. And then I'll answer your question specifically uh, for exactly what you want to hear. So let's do it. Send me an email with your video, 30 seconds or less to rd at robdial.com. Don't be shy. Listen to me right now. If you feel the feeling of I should ask Rob a question, but now you're getting the butterflies of like, I don't like doing video. That means that you should do it. Always push yourself outside of your comfort zone when you feel like you're being too comfortable. So send me And, you know, if you're like absolutely against it, okay, send me an email without a video. But hey, I'm more likely to feature you if you send me a video 30 seconds or less to rd at robdial.com. rd, guess what, guys? Stands for Rob Dial. rd at robdial.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. If you believe that the world is going to you will see all of the ways that the world is going to sh-